everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make mini school supplies that are the perfect size for stuffed animals. I know the school year is well underway, but it's not too late to help your stuffed animals be productive. There is a lot to do, so let's get started! To make all the supplies shown in the intro, you'll need thin cardboard, I like to use a cereal box, paper, I used notebook, construction, and just plain recycled paper. You'll need a glue stick, and I used Mod Podge, but that's not necessary. Toothpicks, aluminum foil, some paint, a paintbrush, some pens, and scissors. I know this is a lot, but this is to make all three of these supplies. I'm going to start with the binder, and that starts with cutting out a 3 and a quarter by 3 and a half inch rectangle to use as a pattern for cutting out the binder. You can always use different measurements to make it however big you want it to be. I'm just starting by tracing this square on the paperboard and then scooting it over about half an inch or however tall you want the binder to be and drawing another square. Then I can just cut it out and fold on the lines I drew. After that, I'm also going to round out the sharp corners since most binders are like that. Next, I need to cut out a rectangle the exact size of that inner part of the binder where the rings would go, so I'm just eyeballing it then trimming it to fit right in there. Now on that piece I just cut out, I'm making very dark lines where I want the rings to be. Just ignore those two lines I already have there. And this next part might not make sense, but now I'm going to make some lines about a millimeter under those first dark ones I made, and don't follow that first one, I made the line way too low. I'm also making lines above the dark ones, but it doesn't really matter how high they are above the dark ones. I know this seems complicated, but I'm trying to make a binder with rings that actually open and close, so this is just part of the process. Now I need to cut more cardboard that will fit perfectly between the lighter lines I drew. After marking those and cutting them out, I ended up with one skinny one and two tall ones. Now I need to cut out the rings, which are just very thin strips of cardboard, a little less than three inches long. The first one I cut was the perfect width, it was a little over a millimeter wide, and the other ones were a little bit too thin. And keep in mind, if your binder is bigger, you'll want to make these rings thicker. And I'm also getting a head start and curving them a little. Now I'm going to need to paint most of these pieces, so it's going to take a while, but I'm going with a light blue and I'm painting the entire binder this, so the outside and the inside. As you can see, this was a Cheerios box. I needed at least two coats for this. Next, I need to do this inner rectangle piece, and before I paint over all these pencil markings, I'm going to transfer those onto the actual binder, just so I can still use them as a guide when I'm putting on the rings. Now I can just paint over one side of this rectangle. Only one side will be visible, so I only painted one side. Now I'm going to paint both sides of the rings gray, and I would have used silver if I had silver paint, but gray will be fine too. And after both sides of those are painted, you can just let them dry, and that's all the pieces we need to paint. I am actually going to do one last layer on the binder itself, and that's a coat of Mod Podge, and this will just make the outside shiny like plastic, like an actual binder. But this is totally optional, I don't think it actually made that big of a difference in the end, so you can definitely leave this off if you don't have Mod Podge. Now while that's drying, I'm going to quickly make some mini notebook paper, and I'm first folding over the edge near the red line, just so it's a little closer to what the edge will be. And after that, I'm going to fold this into thirds, and I think this width is just perfect for the size of my binder, but you may have to adjust it however big you want yours. After making all the folds, I'm just going to cut on those folds and then just cut the paper to whatever height you want it. I used the first one I cut as a guideline for the other ones, so they're all the same height. After cutting out the other ones, some will not have that red line, which I feel like is necessary for it to look like notebook paper, so I'm just going in with a red pen and ruler to draw a line down the side. We'll come back to this, but I'm first going to add the rings to the binder. The first step is to grab that first ring, and I'm just bending it so you get that nice ring shape later. And I guess while I'm at it, I'll do that to the other ones. Now I can grab that first ring and the glue stick, and I'm just putting a little glue on about a third of it. So just that end third. And now I'm going to lay that right below the first dark mark I made. I think with the other ones, I put them directly on top, but with this one, I just have it right below. As long as you know what lines you drew, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going on to the next one, so I'm putting this one directly on top of the black mark. And make sure you're not gluing on top of where the binder will fold. Now I'm going to glue one of my unpainted pieces in the spot it's supposed to go, so mine was this first one. And the ring's eventually going to tuck into here, so you'll want to make sure there's enough space for it to slide easily in there, so I like to curve the ring down to make sure there's enough space, but make sure it's not too tight. And now I'm going to repeat that for the rest of the rings. And now, as you can see, the space between the top of the ring and the cardboard doesn't really matter. After all those pieces are glued down, the last piece to add is that top piece that we painted blue. Well, I painted it blue, you might have chose a different color. 
and so I'm just putting glue on those pieces we laid down and then sticking it on top. And if you look inside there, there should be a little space for the ring to go, and it's kind of hard to see right now, but if you just kind of tuck it in there and look for it, it should go in really easily. If it's not fitting, you'll just have to remove that top piece and adjust the spacing so it's a little bigger. You could also just cut the end of the ring skinnier so it will fit in easier. Now before we get to see these rings in action, we need to put holes in our paper. I'm going to just lay it by the rings and make marks where I'm going to need to make the holes, and since I don't have a tiny hole punch, I'm going to lay the paper on something soft. I think carpet works best for this. Now I'm just going in with a little toothpick and making holes in those marks I made, and since these rings are kind of rectangular, I'm just poking it through and then moving it up and down a little. Now this is ready to put in the binder. I just opened the rings up and then inserted them through the holes, and then you can just put them back in those little slots and they will be closed. I also ended up needing to trim my rings since they were too long, but you can just cut them shorter if you want the rings to be smaller. Now you have your basic binder built and working, but I'm going to add a few more things. I know I didn't mention this in the intro, but this is just a piece of scrap plastic, which is actually packaging from a pack of binder dividers, ironically, so I just cut a scrap of that off, but you can also use those clear plastic sheets if that's what you have. And I'm going to use this to make a little front pocket for our binder, that way you can add whatever picture you want in front of it and it can give your binder a totally new look. So I'm just trimming the plastic into a square that will fit right on the front cover. And then I'm using a glue stick to glue just the edges and the bottom down so the top is open and you can put whatever you want in there. Don't make the plastic go all the way to the top though or else it'll be really hard to get out any paper you put in there. After that, that front pocket is done and here's me testing it out with a little piece of notebook paper. But I'm going to add one more pocket just on the inside, and this is just going to be a half pocket. I know these kind of pockets definitely went through a lot with me. I'd always have so much junk just shoved in there. I'm just gluing this one on the same way I did for the front. Another thing I'll add is if you want your binder to close and it's having trouble closing, I like to just cut a tiny piece of washi tape, any kind of tape will work, and that just holds it down temporarily and the tape comes off really easily. I'm going to be adding one more thing to the binder. I was considering not adding this, but I figured I should just go all the way. I'm going to add some tab dividers just by grabbing my notebook paper and putting that on construction paper and drawing a little tab in addition to the size of the paper. And this will be my one in the front since the tab is at the top. And now I need to just cut it out. Now I'm going to repeat that same thing two more times, but I'm going to just progressively move the tabs lower so you'll be able to see them all once they're stacked together. Now I can just add the holes and then put them in the binder. I also added little labels for each subject. After that, the binder is finished. I'm not adding any other extra elements to this, but I think it looks great. I may need to add more paper to start filling this up though. If you're still with me, the next thing is a folder, which is luckily super easy. All I'm doing is folding a piece of construction paper in half, and I'm cutting off a piece a little bigger than a piece of notebook paper, if that's what you plan to put inside it. And now I'm going to cut another piece folded in half, the same width, but a little less than half the height since this is going to be the pouch. Now all I need to do is glue this in, and I'm starting by putting some glue on that crease, and then just putting glue around the bottom and side edges of the folder. Then you can just stick it on top, and it's basically finished. I thought it looked a little too plain, so I decided to add a little label on it. So I just have a small piece of paper that I'm gluing onto the center, and you could just draw on it if you want, but I'm going to add a label that says math for a math folder. And my handwriting was not doing great while I was writing this, so I just tried to make it better, and I kept adding more stuff to try to fix it, but luckily I stopped. And now I'm going to coat the cover with Mod Podge to get one of those shiny folders, but if I were to do this again, I'd leave it off because it kind of warped the paper, and so the folder wasn't very flat in the end, so I would just leave that off. And after that, it is finished. You can also add more decorations to this if you want to. Now, last but not least, we have the pencil, and I'm going to start with a toothpick and a thin strip of paper, and it doesn't really matter how long it is, but I'm first going to add a little glue to the end and start wrapping it around the toothpick, but you'll still want a little bit of that point sticking out. You should be wrapping the strip of paper kind of downward, and at a certain point, once it gets a few wraps in, I like to just try to fold it upwards, because now I want to switch directions and start wrapping it up. What I'm really trying to do is make this into kind of a cone shape so it looks like an actual pencil, and I wish I had a more precise, detailed way to do this, but all I can say is just randomly fold and wrap this around to get that shape, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It will probably look like a pencil either way once you have it all painted. After building up a few layers, I'm wrapping this downward one more time to get it nice and neat, and I'm just going to add a glue to secure the end. 
Now I'm going to be rolling up a paper tube to be the base of the pencil. So I just have a small scrap of paper here and I'm going to lay the toothpick in there and start wrapping this around and it should be wrapping around the paper part so it will be pretty big and you want to make sure there wasn't glue on that corner because you don't want to seal this toothpick inside you really just want to make a hollow tube and I had to actually take the toothpick out because it was getting stuck in there so I kind of just eyeballed the rest but you'll want to make sure that the thickest part of this paper wrapped around the toothpick should fit right inside the tube. I ended up trimming the paper a little short but I'm just making sure the toothpick will fit right inside here and then just trimming off the end and then gluing it down. Now I'm gonna cut a few inches into this paper tube just to get a nice clean end. And now the toothpick should fit right in there. And I'm first gonna cover the toothpick with glue and you can always add extra glue if it's too loose. But now I can just lower it into there and then cut off the end so it's flat on the other end too. It's okay if you end up cutting through the toothpick too. Now one last thing before I paint it, I'm gonna grab another scrap of paper and basically cut out what's going to be the yellow part of the pencil. So this piece should be about a centimeter less wide than the length of the pencil. I'm cutting out a pretty long piece, but you might not need it that long. And now I'm gonna start folding that short edge just a tiny, tiny bit at a time, and this is gonna give those flat edges to the pencil. I'm really sorry my hands take up most of the shot, but I think you get what I mean. I'm just folding it over and over again. I did this to about half of the paper. And then I'm going to carefully, carefully unfold it, and then this can be wrapped around our pencil. Since I don't wanna flatten any of these folds, I'm gonna apply the glue to the pencil directly, and then just wrap this paper around it. Then I can just trim off the extra. Now before painting it, I'm just going to try to fill in this little gap at the end with more glue, and if your toothpick's still sticking out, you can always try sanding it down. It's finally time to paint, and I'm gonna do this whole thing using one paintbrush and one section in the palette. So I'm first just dipping my paintbrush directly into the yellow and painting the main yellow part of the pencil. And after letting that dry a little, I'm gonna start mixing up some peachy colored paint to be like the wood part of the pencil. So using that same paintbrush with a little yellow on it, I'm just getting some white paint and putting it in my palette and then just adding a tiny bit of tan paint to that and then just mixing it up. And now you can paint the visible wood part of the pencil that color. And lastly, I need to do the pink eraser. So I'm just adding some red to that already light color. It doesn't really matter that there's tan and yellow in there. And now I'm just painting the end of the pencil this. Now this painting strategy I did obviously works best if you're just doing one pencil at a time like I am. That way I didn't have to mix up a ton of paints for the very tiny bit I was painting. I also like to fill in any gaps at the end of the pencil with more paint. After that, I'm gonna color the very tip of the pencil with a Sharpie, and you can also just dip it in black paint, but I feel like a Sharpie is just easiest. So I'm just coloring the end to be the lead. After that, your pencil is almost done. Just one more detail to bring it to life is cutting off a very thin strip of aluminum foil, and then I'm just gonna glue that around the very base of the pencil, but still leaving half the eraser sticking out. After trimming off the extra, I'm gonna make sure it's super stuck on there. And a great way I found to do this is running my fingernail around the foil. And that kind of creates those little indentations that actual pencils have. And I think it just makes it super realistic. And after that, your pencil is finished. Now we finally made it to the end with all our school supplies done. There are definitely more school supplies I could make. So if you wanna see more of these videos, just leave a comment below. I also recently just made a TikTok account. So if you have TikTok, you can go follow me there. I haven't made many videos yet, but I'm still getting the hang of it, and hopefully I will soon. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, comment any requests you have down below. This video was requested, and I will continue doing requested videos for the next few weeks. And I'll see you next time!